Good morning and welcome to this Fornav coffee break. My name is Peter van der I'm a product specialist at Fornav and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. In this video, we will uh, append multiple PDFs to a business central report um, using Fornav. We have added uh, PDF files to Fornav reports before. We have added single PDFs to single reports, either directly but, or by selecting a single PDF from several PDFs in the database uh, on certain conditions. But this was always a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Today, we are going to append multiple PDFs to a single Fornav report. Uh, to demonstrate appending multiple PDFs to Business Central reports using Fornav, I'm going to use these steps. Uh, prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, we are going to add the files to the Fornav file storage in Business Central. Step three, I will set up the proper records uh, in the Fornav designer. Uh, in step four, we will set up the proper triggers for appending the files to a report. Let's start with the first step. Today, I am working on a Business Central Docker environment with the Business Central 2023 Wave 2 release. I have installed the universal code version of the Fornav customizable report pack, and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. I've also installed the Fornav designer, which can be downloaded from the Fornav website. Let's say I want to add two documents to the end of all my order confirmation reports. Uh, a sheet containing the terms and conditions which apply to all the orders at my company and a sheet pertaining, uh, containing some pertinent information about, for example, delivery and installation of orders at my company. I have prepared uh, both of these documents, uh, an information sheet and terms and conditions sheet, but uh, how can I add them to the report? Well, by having Fornav pull them from the database. Um, all right, how do I put them into the database? By uploading them to the Fornav file storage in Business Central, which I will demonstrate. Let's see. Uh, log in again. Oh. I can click the magnifying glass. I'm in Business Central now. I can click the magnifying glass. I can click. File storage, which will navigate me to the file storage. And this is where I can upload my files one by one and give them unique markers. For my terms and conditions, I will give it, this is the terms and conditions. I will give it the code terms. Yes, and I will give it the type uh, PDF. Um, and for my information sheet, for my information sheet, I will give it the. I first need to give it the name, the code info. I will also give it the type PDF, and I will upload the information sheet. Now. The, the 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 names under code make sense. These are the terms and conditions. This is the info sheet. Does the name under type matter in this case? No, it doesn't. In the next step, we are going to set up our JavaScript records in the Fornap Designer. We are going to use the code field to filter between our files. You could easily use the type field for the same purpose either instead of or in addition to the code field, in which case you could give it a re relevant name in that field. For example, the language code the file is in. In my case, I only need to differentiate between the terms and conditions uh, PDF and the information PDF. So it doesn't really matter what name I give in the type field. I named it PDF as a filler. Um, is there a best practice to naming your files in this page? Possibly but that depends on the specific use of the documents in the file storage. Are there many PDF files in different languages? In that case, they probably should be differentiated by language code in the first place, and then by specific type of file. 
are there different kinds of files for different purposes like images and PDFs and so on, then you'll probably want to differentiate by file type or by purpose first. In general, it's probably fair to say that you want to uh, filter by code first and by type second. So you will want to have your most general category in the code column and a more detailed filter in the type column, if any. Uh, in any case, these files are now in the database uh, in the Fornaf file storage table because they're saved. Well, uh, yeah. It doesn't recognize that I don't want to put anything in. Uh, I'll take this. Now, the next steps are for getting them back out and appended to my report. First, I need to set up JavaScript records to the Fornaf file storage table so that the layout has access to the records contained therein. Um, as a JavaScript record usually only accesses the first record it finds, we will need to create two JavaScript records, one for each of our PDF files. Uh, let's go to the Fornaf designer and do that. Let's see, I have already opened an, a standard order confirmation layout. Um, and to add a JavaScript record to a layout, I need to go to the report property. This is the, the, the total report. You can click the gray area and you'll get the report properties. You click here, I'll get the header properties and the section properties. But this is the report properties and here I can click under data, records, records collection, I can click the three dots. And here I click add, which opens a prompt. And here I can type uh, for now file, and I'll click tab, because this is a neat trick. If you uh, if you type the table name here and you press tab, and it will find the first uh, uh, table which matches. But if it's the, if you type enough, you can find, and if you don't mistype, you can find the right table. So for now, file will always leave me with for now file storage, just to, to make it a bit more quick. I don't need any link reference and I don't need any link. So we'll leave that blank. So we now have a JavaScript record to the former file storage table, which contains our two PDF files, but it will only pick up the first record it finds. Which is that? And if necessary, how do I pick the other one? So let's steer this JavaScript record to the right record. Let's tell it to pick the record where the code where the code field my prompt opens all the way up here. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. This is not handy. Over here, the code field equals terms. Because that's what we typed under code. Let's also give it the name terms so that it matches. And <laughs> yes, this is now uh, a record which can access uh, the entire line of the call uh, of the, the the table, which contains the constant terms, which is one uh, uh, a record. But where specifically does our PDF live? Um, let's check it out. We made this, uh, we'll go to the field list of the report and we'll go to the terms data item. And these are fields are all the fields of this table, the, the ones we accessed in the Business Central uh, page. There's code, there's type, there's the file name. And here in the data field, that's where the PDF is stored. But there is a wrinkle before we can call on that data field. Data is a field that stores uh, binary large objects or blobs. It is a blob field and blob fields are not automatically calculated when their record is called upon. 
otherwise it would be a massive drain on the memory for something we might not need like if we um, only looked for the type uh, of the record then it would not need to calculate the uh, the data field every time we looked on uh, we, we looked at the type and business that would be a waste of resources so business central doesn't do that in this case i've uh, gone back to the properties in this case we do need the data field um, because that's where the pdf lives so in the record property let's go to calculated fields click the three dots opens the prompt on this side and i've opened the wrong one Let's open terms, calculate fields, and this is where data goes to be calculated. And now you can see data is a calculated field. Let's quickly do the same for our other uh, record. So here we want where the, I'll do this in the other screen, saves me a bit of time. Uh, where it is info and we'll name it info and we'll calculate the data field here as well so now we have set up a Java, two javascript records that allow us to access the data of the terms and conditions pdf and the information pdf in the layout in the next and final step, we'll actually turn these, this data, into uh, PDFs and append these at the end. So far, we've stored the PDF files in the database and we've made JavaScript records to the file storage table in the layout. And we've made sure that the blob fields with our PDF files are calculated. So how do we turn these blob fields into appended PDF files? We need to do two things. We need to tell for now to store the data in these blob fields as PDF files, which we know they are. Um, and then we need to tell for now to take these stored PDF files and stick them at the end of our report. These two things should happen at two different moments during the generation of the report. The first step can be done almost at the beginning of the process and the second one, second step should be one of the last thing that happened. For now designer allows us to run some JavaScript during some of the triggers that happen uh, in Business Central report generation. So let's start with the first trigger, which we'll do in the report properties on pre-report, which is before the report is even prepared, is being prepared. We will navigate to a certain field. I'll go into current report, data items, header PDF, I'll double click it and this field will tell it to store brackets something we're going to call terms and what that entails is our terms dot data field. So reading backward, I've now told it to take whatever is in terms data, give that the name terms, and store it in the Fornav PDF store for the header data item. The Fornav PDF store is the bit of Fornav that allows us to do this. And now I'll Alt Shift down arrow to copy that line and type info, do the same one for our info data. Um, what this allows us to do is to use the final header trigger on uh, the, the final trigger in the header data item on after get record, which triggers after the data item has grabbed a record and processed it, to tell Fornav, hey, hey PDF store, remember that I gave you something I call terms, go ahead and stick it at the end of what you're doing. And how do we tell it? Well, we'll tell it that by going to the header data item on after get record and the javascript will be almost the same per report data items header pdf and now we'll tell it to append from store brackets and we'll 
whatever is under terms. Let's give it that. I don't recall if I give it the semicolon on uh, the other one. We'll check it out in a minute. We can do the same for info, of course. Up until now, it was pretty much the same as when we attached a single PDF at the end. And that's because it pretty much is the same. The only difference is now I have made two of these lines with uh, the Alt Shift down arrow and I changed terms to info. So now it adds two PDFs at the end. Um, this way it will first append terms and then it will append the information. If I wanted that the other way around, I could just swap these lines around. But for, for now, this way around is fine. I'll um, check for a moment if the on pre report I gave it the semicolons, otherwise it would be, well, maybe not go wrong, but uh, it wouldn't be uh, very pleasant. Now let's pre let's look at what we've done. Pick the first order we have and print our confirmation. And I hope it's going right. So the order itself, the terms and conditions, any information sheet, exactly what we wanted. So let's recap what we just did. Uh, first, we added two files to the Fornaf file storage in Business Central. Then we created a JavaScript record to each of these files in the Fornaf designer and made sure to calculate the data field. And finally, we added the on pre-report and on after get record triggers in the layout to set up and display the PDF files in the Fornaf file storage. Thank you for listening to me so far. Let's see if we have any questions. None so far. Uh, so I'll wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about Fornav or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.com slash coffee break. And there are still no questions. So thank you. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.